All right, we're being told that CD, that's this length here, bisects angle ACB. So when we have a little ray like that or a little segment that's bisecting an angle, we know that the big angle is being cut into two little angles. So let's go write down our givens. CD bisects angle ACB. And what that tells us is that angle ACD is congruent to angle D, uh, B, C, D. So when I say these angle names, I have to say the vertex in the middle. So A, C, D congruent to B, C, D. I've got to use all the corresponding parts and I always have to put the vertex in the middle of that three letter name. Reason for this is going to be definition of bisect. Okay, what else did they tell me? They told me that CD is a height of the triangle. What the heck is a height? Well, a height is an altitude, like same definition as an altitude. So we just wanted you to be exposed to that other word. Okay, so when I'm told that a height has been made, I know that this little angle right here is formed. So if there's a right angle there, those are both 90 degrees. And so I'm going to go ahead and state that angle CDA is congruent to angle CDB. And that's definition of height. Okay, I went ahead and paused it so I could go grab this little definition here for you. So the altitude of a triangle is the perpendicular drawn from the vertex to the opposite side, also known as the height of a triangle. So I threw that little definition in there for you. Okay, so now we don't have any other givens. Right? So we do have a reflexive side. So I could say that CD is congruent to CD. But can I get anything else from this picture? I don't know anything about these sides, so I can't talk about those. I don't know anything about, you know, midpoint or bisecting or anything about those sides. And I'm trying to prove that it's isosceles, but I need triangle congruency first to do that. Well, this has <clears throat> angle side angle now. Do you see it? Angle side angle. So we do have enough for triangle congruency. So here we go. Triangle ACD is congruent to triangle BCD by angle side angle. Okay, now I can say that side AC is congruent to side BC by corresponding parts of congruent triangles or congruent CPCTC. And then finally, I can state our proof statement Triangle ABC is isosceles by definition of isosceles. By the way, do you know what an isosceles is? It's a triangle with these two sides congruent. So that's why we had to prove that those two sides were congruent 
in order to say that it was isosceles. Ooh, that one got complex, right? Okay, uh, next one. Let's see what they're giving us. Given that CD is parallel, that's what those two little symbols mean, to AB, let's go mark this. That means that we have parallel sides and there's a whole bunch of things we know about angles and angle relationships inside parallel sides. Also, angle B is congruent to angle D. Angle B is congruent to angle D. So what else can I say about this picture based on what I was given? Well, we could say that there's a reflexive side here. Do you see it? AC is congruent to itself. And then what angle relationships could we use? We have an angle, we have a side. I wish there was one more angle. Well, if we have parallel lines there, do you see it? These are called alternate interior angles. Do you remember those from our angle relationships? So angle DCA is congruent to angle BAC by alternate, oops, interior angles are equal or alternate interior angle theorem. All right, now I can state that the triangles are congruent. Triangle DCA is congruent to triangle BAC by angle angle side. Finally, I can say that CD is congruent to AB, the thing I'm trying to prove, by corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. CPCTC. All right, pause the video, try the next one. You're getting good at these. C is the midpoint of BE and AD. So C is the midpoint. That means this is equal to this and this is equal to this. So let's go state that. BC congruent to EC. Definition of midpoint. And AC is congruent to DC, definition of midpoint. And do you see the other part staring at us? The vertical angles. Angle BCA is congruent to angle ECD by vertical angle theorem. Do I have enough for congruency? Yes. So I can say side angle side, triangle BCA is congruent to triangle ECD by side angle side. Now I'm trying to prove that AB is congruent to DE. I'm sorry, not congruent, parallel, parallel. So I have to work in reverse with angle relationships. How can I prove those are parallel? Well, now that I proved the triangles are congruent, now I can say, for example, that these angles are equal. Angle A is congruent to angle D. That's by 
congruent corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. And since I have alternate interior angles, guess what? AB has to be parallel to DE. So when I work in reverse like that, instead of using, um, hey, these are parallel, so I know the alternate interior angles are equal. If I know the alternate interior angles are equal, I can say they're parallel. That's called the converse of alternate interior angles are equal. Um, you could also say, yeah, pretty much that's it. So we haven't talked at all about this whole idea of a converse. So I just wanted to expose you to it today, how we could work backwards like that and state that it's parallel because we had those angles. Um, and then we'll talk more about converses when I get back, okay? Don't worry on your quiz Friday, we're not gonna have any converses yet. Okay, how'd you do on that worksheet? Get her done, turn her in. It's not homework. <laughs>